right, guys, we are live. We have less than three minutes to go. Yes, it depends up on the table, Mushy. No, no, it doesn't. Hi, Sarah. Is Alora with you? Hi, Connie. And thank you, Sarah. Okay, it's one o'clock. We are here. Um, what I did with this last night after class was over and I had a chance to kind of look at things and see what I liked, what I didn't like, what I wanted to change, what I wanted to keep. And I encourage you to always think about those things with your work too. There's no reason why you can't, even if you've done something, why you can't go back and change it if, if you want to. So let's start with um, the moss here and here. What I ended up doing was after I added the uh, teal zircon and the emerald, the uh, color art products, brushed those on both places so that this piece here that I added matched what it was previously there. Uh, I decided that I wanted to add metallics, more metallics to it. So I looked at these two products. This is uh, metallic luster gold brush and copper kettle and I ended up thinking that the gold the gold brush did not work didn't put enough gold on here so I went and I got the liquid metal a sergeant liquid metal and the gold and I just kind of brushed it on here heavier at the bottom lighter at top same thing down here and then I did go back with the metallic luster copper kettle and after I kind of spritzed it a little bit with water, I went back and I added some copper up here. And I also did that down here to pick up on those little beads that we have that I added in there. So I did that. Um, I added the gold and the copper here on top of the beads here. So it really picks those up. I really like how that turned out. The biggest thing I did was the tree itself. After I started looking at it, I, I just I didn't like it. Uh, I wanted more of a contrast than what I was getting. And at this point, I think I have redone the tree three times. Um, the latest was about an hour ago. I just, and I, I think I'm okay with it at this point. Maybe we'll see. I 
went back and painted over it with, with white. And then I decided to use the Dale Rowney uh, Acrylic Artist Ink, and this is just the black. And I used a, what I did was I wet my brush, and I went over this with a wet brush. And then I used a dry brush, and I put dropped some of the black in there and immediately wiped it off. Okay. That ended up being a little, I don't know, I didn't like that either. So here I went with the white again. Uh, and I just ended up wiping and wiping and wiping. And so it kind of turned more of a gray here. And I kind of like that because you've got the contrast. That there's so much warm going on here. And then this neutral over here. That appealed to me, so I decided to embrace that. I went with the, let's see if I got it, yeah. On here, I also used the Silver Spark on the Metallic Luster. You know? And I added some of that and wiped away. Then I added some of the copper and I wiped away. Then I ended up putting just a little gold right here where the sun would hit it. And the very last thing that I did was I got my golden high flow acrylic. This is the shading gray. And Sandra Duran Wilson introduced me to this. And thank you, Sandra, for that. Um, this is just the regular gray will not work as well. So I love this. And I went back and I used some shading gray in here around the tree just to give it a little more depth and pop. So I'm really, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. So we'll see what the next one looks like. And in that vein, let's talk about that a little bit. Okay. The next piece, this is, we'll use the plaster wrap on that. And this is the only one I have that has the plaster on it. And this is what an early tree that I did. So um, there's definitely a learning curve when you're using the plaster. This is a plaster wrap, and this is where I use the uh, shredded up name tags with the metallic on them. And I've used paint on there and everything. This is when I was just starting out uh, probably three years ago or so. I really had no idea what I was doing with this, but it's, but it's fun and, and I, I still like it. So I'm encouraging you this week, and we'll start the next class on April 6th, to look around your house, yard, garage, wherever, and see if you can't find something that you could use other than the moss as foliage for the tree. And we're going to go totally non-realistic with this. So what can you use? Um, a woman that I taught with, uh, Tusi McMillan, she's on Juju's. She, I remember a piece, I don't have it, but I remember a piece that she did and she had used for the tree foliage, she used pencil shavings. And it was so cool. So that's an option. I, like if you're hand sharpening something, I don't think the electric sharpener will work very well. But if you're hand sharpening, it's got those were actual pieces of, of the wood. And it looked really cool. So think about things that you can use for that. Okay. This is my bucket of plaster. I have a designated... I have designated materials that I use with this. Number one, this is, you gotta have water. So I've got this old bowl here, old Tupperware piece, and this is what I put the water in. Then I have a bin here, and this is what I cut my pieces in. Depending on the roll of plaster that you get, and this is Rigid Wrap, I believe, is the, um, is the brand name, and you can get this at Michael's. Uh, or probably on Amazon to get it delivered if you cannot get out to the store, don't want to go out to the store, and I wouldn't blame you if you didn't. So depending on the width, you're going to want to cut it into smaller pieces to start out with. Little pieces. Because this stuff is really, really messy to work with. Really messy to work with. And it dries fairly fast. So... It's easier to work with small pieces than it is with larger ones. So you may cut some this size, and if we're doing the, the limbs that are really getting small at the end, then you might want them half that size. So when I cut them up, I usually have a selection of sizes so that when I'm in the middle of making a tree, I don't have to stop 
and cut things. And a word to the wise here, the water that you're using for this. When you're finished, it's gonna have a lot of plaster in the bottom. Do not, do not under any circumstances, dump this down your sink. What I do is when I'm finished with water, I set it outside so that it dries and then the plaster's in the bottom and then I just take that dry plaster and dump it in the trash. Um, probably not a good idea to dump it on your yard or your garden or your, you know, I guess you could put it on the concrete or the asphalt, but it's gonna be a big white spot if you do so. So um, just be careful with it. Um, Probably using gloves is the best idea when you're working with this, although I really haven't done that. But I do notice that after I use it, my hands dry out. So it's probably a good idea with that. So that's what we're going to use to create the structure of the tree itself. So background. I like ephemera. I love vintage ephemera stuff. I have a thing for paper and I collect it. And this is just one very, very small part of all the papers that I have. And so when I do this, this tree on my background, I'm going to collage some of these things into the background. Now, painting is gonna cover a lot up, but they're gonna be in the background. So you can have a little bit of rough texture on there, but we're not, we're not trying to make this hugely textural in the background because we're going to also put text on there. So smooth papers, at least in the area that you're going to put text in, is probably the best idea. It does not have to be vintage. It can be any kind of tech, any kind of papers. And if you want to use a little bit of the um, crackle paste in areas other than where you're going to put text, that's fine too. Okay. The text itself. Okie doke. Let's see. Um, there's lots of different things you can use for for the actual stamping of it. These are different kinds of stamp pads that you can use. I have discovered through the years that for me, the easiest thing to do is to actually paint on the raised part of the stamp with black paint or whatever color you want to do. You have to be careful because if you glob on the paint too much, it's going to ooze into the little down onto the, the base of the stamp itself and it'll create a blob when you print. But I've discovered I like that the best. I've got lots and lots of different uh, stamping for letters and numbers. I'm not sure what the brand, I think I've gotten all of these probably at Michael's. So they have various sizes, but this one, this is maybe about an inch, the stamp itself, uh, fairly small. And you can get them in different fonts. All sorts of things, funny ones. But I, when I'm stamping on there, for the most part, I'm enjoying putting, um, I like to put quotes on there. So I like to stick with usually just a, plain everyday font. Nothing, nothing outlandish, nothing crazy. What else could you use instead of stamps? Well, here's some things I've accumulated over the years. I don't really use these that much, but you could. There's no reason you couldn't. Uh, these are Jim Holtz. Um, they're just words that you, <clears throat> excuse me, can peel off of there and stamp on there. They're little though, so know that these are magnetic words magnetic poetry words I used to have these all over the refrigerators for years it's interesting the uh, poems that my kids could come up with so I've still got those um, that would work really well these are word beads you could use those scrabble letters no reason why you couldn't use Scrabble letters. And there is no reason at all why you couldn't take, why you couldn't collage words from text in magazines, newsprint, whatever, that you couldn't do that. Okay. So we'll talk more about that later. 
Um, other than that, let's see here. You're going to be looking for your foliage. Um, I was talking about you need something, black paint or stamp pads, you're going to need that. You could also use stencils. If you have letter stencils, you could also use stencils. That's cool, perfectly. So use what you have. Don't go out and purchase anything. Use what you got. Paints. As far as the paints go, we're pretty much going to use exactly the same paints. Um, you might need some metallics, depending on your taste. Again, I like golden. I always prefer golden fluid acrylics. Um, everything I do, they're just wonderful. And pigments, your color art or the primary elements, or magicals, or the um, mica dust, whatever you want. You'll use what you want there. So, uh, I'm going to do, my canvas is going to be long and skinny like the other one, because that's what I have on hand, so I'm using that. So, whatever canvas you have, just realize you're going to be making a tree, so probably um, uh, vertical is the best orientation for your canvas. So, that's all I have here. You've got a week and a little few, a couple of days to accumulate what you need to accumulate to do this project. Okay, um, it'll premiere on April 6th, and we're going to try and get it finished by the end of the week, by that Friday. And I've got enough different types of trees to keep going on trees for probably the duration of our stay at home. So. We'll just keep going with it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did enjoy it, I'd really appreciate it if you're on my business page right now if you're watching this, if you would leave a review on my business page or a few kind words would be awesome. And if you don't already belong to Juju's, stop in over there because that's where I post most of the pictures and I will be posting some detailed pictures of the piece I just finished. So check all that out. Follow me on um, Judy Hudson Art on Facebook. I would appreciate it. You guys, once again, stay safe, stay home. Um, have a great weekend, and I will see you on April 6th. Bye.